This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. In your glory. In other words, uh, there's still more of you to learn. There's more of you to, more to do. There's more to grow. That should be the way it is for every one of us to the day that we close our eyes in death. We want to grow more. We want to know him more. We want to understand more of the kingdom. But we can cast our cares on him. I've gone to, I've gone to Lord sometimes in my life. Lord, please, for, I, I messed up. I tell you what, somehow or another, I tied my own spiritual shoestrings together. And when I went to run, I bent my nose so far it was almost sticking in my ear. And God, you know, God is so gentle. I've, I've had him tell me, I know, Mike, I've been waiting for you to come so that I can straighten out your nose and to heal your boo-boos and to show you where you messed up. I was just sitting there waiting how long you were going to pout about it before you came to me and said, I need help. Am I, am I singing somebody else's song this morning? I can cast, he cares, he wants us to grow. He doesn't want us to get caught up in the flesh. He doesn't want us to go back to old cycles of, of carnality that do nothing but bring in the enemy and strip us of any true spirituality. He wants us to grow more than we want to grow. And boy, we got to understand that. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The one who's stealing from you isn't Jesus. It's the devil and his whole kingdom. He's active stealing. And what Jesus is trying to do is help you get your doors and windows locked in that security system on so that he can begin filling your life full of the treasures of heaven. But he warns us. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your, enemy, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I've seen some charismatics make fun of this scripture. The devil had his teeth pulled out. No, he hasn't. You cannot find that anywhere in scripture. That word devour does not mean gum to death. I know Mary, one time she was saying, she, she was listening to that, you know, there, there was one song that, that all he can do is meow because he's had his teeth pulled out. Mary said, if that's the truth, I'm getting gummed to death. You know what I mean? But that word devour means to tear from limb to limb. You can't do that with gums. You can do that with a good set of chompers. But why do we need to be sober and vigilant? Because the enemy is adaptive. He will spy out your weaknesses. He'll say, okay, I, God's got them going over here, but I'm going to go around them and around their encampment until I find the blind spot. That's why the Holy Spirit will readjust our focus, readjust some things. And for, if you're like me, he will also give you an attitudinal adjustment. Your problem is your attitude right now, Mike. Because I have gotten some emails and some phone calls that gave me an attitude. And if you allow it, it will ruin your day. Because there's a witchcraft sting with many of them. And so I have learned to rebuke in the name of Jesus to bind up witchcraft and to hit the delete key. 
I went through so many Apple, uh, Apple keyboards that I hook up to my notebook that one guy said, we're just going to make you a USB delete key. That way it's easier to replace. Because I had Apple actually had to replace two or three keyboards that within a few months I wore them out. Just at the junk. Now we hear from a lot of many wonderful people, don't get me wrong. Many people are praying for us, they're looking for answers. But I'm tired of the fishing that they'll ask you a question when you answer it, you know they haven't had time to even read it, and then you get a 10-page response tearing you apart from one end to the other. Guys, they're, they're the teeth in the lion's mouth and don't even know it. That's why in Timothy, the Apostle Paul says, listen, those that walk in strife are taken captive by the enemy to do his will. And there are a lot of lion's teeth that are of the kingdom of darkness right now all over the internet claiming to be doing God's work. That's got to stop. I'm looking for believers to cheer one another on and tell them to go deeper. Go deeper in the spirit. Go deeper in the word. Go deeper in your understanding. Not tearing them apart because you, they, they, you, 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 you don't agree with that the, the Antichrist not only has a word on his nose, but there's three freckle, freckles and they're to the left and they're in this specific configuration that matches the, uh, the three pyramids that line up with Pilates or something, you know. I mean, there's some ridiculous stuff sometimes and people will fight over it. When you're sober, you don't get caught up in that child's play. There are bigger stakes at hand. There's the salvation of an entire generation that we're going to see come to Christ. I was reading uh, this, I guess, the last couple of weeks, and it excited me. And Carl Gollops and others mentioned the same article that the, not the millennial generation, but the next one, I think they're calling it the X generation or something. They are more conservative than the baby boomers were after World War II. The next generation that is coming up is going to make conservative Christians look like they're dressed in lace. And if we don't get our act together to, to capture their attention with the kingdom and bring them to Jesus, we're going to miss one of the greatest opportunities because it's that generation that is going to bring in the great harvest for Jesus Christ in these last days. Not a lot of the young people are going to listen to old fuddy-duddies. You know, I've been to some conferences, and there's some guys I, I just love that are like spiritual sons. But what you, you know, they'll say hi to me and everything, but you see, have these younger ones kind of bundling together because, and they're encouraging one another. They're saying, hey, if you're doing this, I know a guy. He can help you. Not getting jealous over each other's ministries, but looking to make way for each other's ministries to accelerate. Man, that, I mean, I, I, I was almost brought to tears as I was watching that. I was just quietly in my corner by my table, and I mean, I was fighting tears coming down my face. I said, man, Lord, give us thousands upon thousands upon thousands more around the world, just like that. God reminds us that the enemy is active. A roaring lion is on the hunt. Because the sound of his roar causes his prey to freeze in fear. Do you know what changes that whole scenario? When you have moved so close to God and you're being vigilant and sober. That means alert, active, watching. You're watching how heaven is moving. You're watching how the enemy is moving. When you're in that position, there's another lion of the tribe of Judah. And let me tell you something. Jesus is just about ready to begin roaring over his people. But it's going to be a roar that will only resonate over the remnant. Because he needs his special forces in this day of this hour. In fact, this year, Tisha B'Av, which I think is this weekend which is the time that the temple was destroyed twice, same day, which corresponds back, uh, according to many rabbis, when the first time Israel came to the River Jordan and refused to cross and basically told God, you just brought us here so our kids can die. 
Israel never repented of that, and it caused a window of opportunity by the enemy. So twice the temple was destroyed, and Mary and I have discovered that these are also high occult times because it's those that follow Cirrus, the star Cirrus, which is also known as the Luciferian star, the dog star, star, is in ascendancy right now. And they use all that together, and they're usually it's on five or six year cycles. And this year is a cycle of tsunami power. That's one of the reasons why we're seeing so much destruction going on and so much tragedy. You cannot legislate the occult power out of existence. It can only be prayed out of existence. No more than you can legislate morality. You can't. And when the very ones that are suppressing the gospel that can change hearts are griping about the pandemonium that has been loosed in this void of proper ethics and morality, they're fooling themselves. They know it's a product of their own working. But let me tell you something. There was a time that the gospel was truly preached on every corner, that ministers and ministries were respected and even feared by politicians. You see, that was a time that you didn't have to lock your cars, that you didn't have to lock your doors, that you wouldn't have to worry about carrying a weapon with you. Because instances like that were either very secluded or very rare. But not now. Now you almost want to put a chain around your house and put extra locks in a, in a force field around your house before you leave. And it's getting worse in the cities, but I think it's going to eventually come out in the countries, in the countrysides, because it's, this is, there's not as many eyes. Guys, it's all got to change. But see, we're also coming up against something that's a good thing. Tishri is a part of the fall feast that predate the Day of Atonement by 40 days. And its origin was, how many know the first time that Moses came down from the mountain after 40 days, they were all basically in, in the depths of occult worship and having an orgy and everything else that goes on with it. And how many know that did not go well for Israel? The second time he went, they learned their lesson, and they spent those 40 days in fasting and in prayer and in seeking God. And they knew it was going to be 40 days. And what's interesting, it was the Day of Atonement that Moses came down with the second set of tablets. And so encoded into the feast is this time of seeking God, of being very reflective, of allowing the Holy Spirit to show me where my attitude needs adjusting, where the enemy has gotten in, where I've allowed the yeast of Babylon to get into my life so that I can expel it. And then it goes into overdrive between Yom Tura. I do not call it Rosh Hashanah because that was adapted in Babylon. The Bible calls it not the head of the year, but the sounding of the trumpet. Okay? So there's those 10 days of awe. Oh, this, is, this is a precursor so that when we get to the 10 days of awe, oh, we can put it into overdrive. Because the day of atonement for the body is a day of empowerment if we're right. Because Messiah koshers the enemy. We're entering into a time that the occult is in ascendancy right now. There is occult power flowing like a current around the world in response to what's been going on the last few years. Do you think that heaven is going to not respond with its own flow of power? When we read the book of Acts, the occult, the mystery religions, were in ascendancy in the dominating nation that was ruling Rome. Just like it was in Greece, just like it was in Babylon. And so everything of society was pagan. I mean, you couldn't even go down to Burger King without having your, your burger, you know, that meat had been sacrificed to Zeus or Jupiter or, or Mars or whatever. And it got so bad, I, I could see a lot of thin Gentile believers. And finally, you know, Apostle Paul said, this for your sake, because you know, you're being rejected by the Jewish community and now you're being rejected by the 
by the Gentile community because you won't participate in all their reindeer games, you know? Just don't ask, don't tell, just pray over it and eat it, you know? Uh, still to this day, if I, if I know there's something in if you, uh, halal meat has been sacrificed to Allah, and you're starting to see that show up in restaurants and in different places, as well as there's a tax on it that a portion of that tax goes to fund jihad, this old fat boy ain't eating it. I won't do it. I will not knowingly because I have an option. I go down there and find a chicken or something that Bubba killed that don't know nothing about anything except I'm going to bring food to market. I can go find that and eat it. But we need to know that this is, is, is rising. At the same time in the book of Acts, we see the gifts of the Holy Spirit exploding. We're going to see a tsunami of heaven respond with the gifts of the Holy Spirit like we have never seen them before. Not just in church services, but out there where it will make a difference. And it will not be wrapped in religiosity. You will not have to sit and tremble and roll your eyes up in the back of your head as if you're having a seizure before you give a word. You just walk up to somebody and say, hey, can I share something with you? If you've been having trouble, I, I, I just kind of felt this when I got around you. I just like to share if, if it hits home, receive it. If not, just take me a kook. And when you, you do it in a loving way, and you start getting the attention of those that are lost in darkness, that's where the gifts function the best, is out there. It's also time for us to take back our giftings from the enemy. Now, giftings are separate than the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For some of us, those giftings is graphic design, or farming, or cattle ranching, or gardening, or, or, or sewing, or carpentry, all these things. Did you know from, we, we understand from the Hebraic church that when we do them with an integrity and being led by God, that God considers that a worship? Doesn't matter what it is. You can be a butcher and pray over that meat and people start getting blessed by the meat. Oh, that's impossible. Really? I know that agents of the occult have been involved in the food chain for decades, cursing the meat specifically to land on Christians to destroy the family. Well, doesn't it look like that's taken hold? Well, yeah. We can be used. Some of the administration, leadership, hospitality. But to give it to God and say, God, let me make a difference in whatever that is that I'm using. Not only to use it in the church, but in the marketplace. How many people's lives would forever be changed if people could see God in somebody in the marketplace? And since there's a difference, we've got to give these giftings. And I believe that as we're faithful with those, guess what? God's going to give you some more. If you're faithful with a little, you're going to become faithful of much. And so I'm believing that there's going to be a multiplication of talents that's going to be released all across the body of Christ. Finally, the words of both Paul and Peter warn us there is no time to be on autopilot. You're just going through the motions because this is what you do every day. I tell you what, sometimes for ministry, I literally feel like the Dunkin' Donut man meeting myself at this door. Answer the emails. Oh, I've answered the emails. Grade the papers. Oh, I've grade the papers. Edit the video. Oh, you know, uh, uh, this week, uh, you know, when I was trying to edit those videos that were all messed up, part of me was aggravated and part of me was relieved because I was too behind, which is about a day and a half worth of editing. I thought, Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, you have that kind of going on someday. Because the devil wants to get us in a rut. And I want to be in a position where God says to set everything you have aside because I just want to talk to you or show you something out of my word today. I've got to have the freedom to do it and give myself permission. That, I, think, I think that's for all of us. We need to give ourselves permission to hear God and obey God and to step out of that daily rut. 
when we do, it throws off the enemy. There's, there's, there's a reason they call familiar spirits familiar spirits. They hang around you, and the whole time they're taking notes. Okay? Every morning, Mike gets up looking for coffee. Okay? Got that one. Mike does this. Mike does that. Mike does this. Mike does that. Now, that's his pattern every single day. So, now that I know his pattern... How can I set up ambushes based upon the pattern? The easiest way not to get ambushed is to not be there. I know that's deep. But if we would follow, and I'm, I'm preaching to you guys as much as I'm preaching to me right now, that if the Holy Spirit says, change your whole day plan, I've got to be willing to change my whole day plan. I know I've got a lot of writing to do. Now I'm past a lot of these conferences. The last time I pray I ever do two back-to-back, -back, that was rough. Especially when you got to drive 11 hours. And what I found out crazy about that Ohio trip, not only was it 11 hours out there, but it was 11 hours back. God didn't shorten the trip back for me at all. I loved being up there. I just wish I had one. I wish I had a DeLorean with a flux capacitor or something. Just beam me up, Scott, to get me there quicker. But guys, I've got to be, God, God may say, today, I know you were planning on editing video today, but today what I want you to do is write. Or today I want you to do is this. All of us have got to be willing to lay down our own plans and be obedient to the Holy Spirit because it's more than about us. Wouldn't you like to become a strategic agent for the kingdom of God? That he took you out of your rut, took you a place you never went, did something you never did before so that you could plant a seed of life in somebody because he used you as the perfect witness at that moment. And the devil didn't see it coming. It's time to take the easy button away from the devil and say, I, I tell you what, I am tired of you pushing my button. Give that thing back to me, and I'm going to break it in a thousand pieces, and I'm going to make life on you as difficult as possible because I am tired of your games and your wiles and your tactics. So I have decided I'm going to humble myself before God, and I'm going to let the Holy Spirit begin to arrange my days and arrange what I do and show me how I'm supposed to change because I want to to please him and I want to let you know even before you find the lake of fire I want you to discover what hell is like on a daily basis and man you get a hundred thousand of us doing that how many know the devil has had a bad day you get three or four million of us doing that and he's pulling out his hair you get the entire remnant activated living in this way and loving one another and not getting in the flesh and living the word in integrity and being prayer warriors and following the Spirit of God, it really begins to mess up the devil's day the exact same way that he's used to messing up your days. I call that payback, baby. And it's time for him to have some payback in this day and this hour. I'm, I'm loaded for bear this morning. Father, give us the grace. Father, give us your grace. We long for your supernatural ability to get out of our ruts. Get out of the places where the enemy had us bound. Break us free of those things. And let us empower us to do what we were not able to do before. To bring glory to the name of Jesus. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over the remnant wherever they are in the world. Father, I speak freedom. I command every shackle to open. I command every chain to break. I command every prison to open, whether it's a prison of their mind, the prison of the flesh. Father, whatever the bondage is, Father, loose it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, if you need to send warring angels, Father, I ask that you would send warring angels in such number that hell has never seen that many released before upon humanity to set people free. Father, let there be spontaneous healings. Let cancers dry up. Let type 2 diabetes disappear and never to return again. 
Father, let lungs function the way that you created them to. Father, help us rid our bodies of the toxins that the deep state and the Illuminati players have put into our very environment to make us sick all the time. Father, give us a supernatural immune system to throw this junk off and to thrive in this last day so that we can do your will in the earth. And Father, make us true soldiers in the body of Christ. Not just the average foot soldier, but Father, I'm looking for Navy SEALs and Special Forces and Green Berets and Deltas to begin coming up out of nowhere like John the Baptist out of the desert. The enemy didn't have any idea that they existed, but when they come up, they're like Rambo saying, Satan, I'm coming for you. That they have one King Jesus, they have one purpose to glorify Him. And they have one power, and that's the Holy Spirit in their lives. Father, raise up your remnant wherever they are in the world and empower them for this day and this hour so that the name of Jesus would be glorified, that heaven would fear it, and that men who have been set free would rejoice at the mention of his name in all the corridors of the earth. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it today. In Jesus' name. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken, be empowered, and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the Kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.